Welcome back to another video. I thank you for taking time to spend with me. I do not take your time for granted. If this is your first time listening to me, I thank you. If anything that I share today resonates with you, I encourage you to hit subscribe and turn on the notification bell. To all the new subscribers, welcome. It's my sincere hope that you find information here that elevates you and inspires you as you continue to journey onwards. To the returning subscribers, family, I appreciate you so much. I'm so thankful for you. I want to talk to you today about the danger of reconciling with the narcissist. You know, when the narcissist discards, it's really painful. Oftentimes it's out of the blue and we are left in a fog wondering what happened to me. It's like a pain you've never experienced before. Many of us have experienced heartbreak prior to narcissistic abuse and it's not the same. And that's because this is a soul hurt. It's your soul that is crushed, not your heart. And that's why the pain is different. When the narcissist disappears after the discard and there's absolutely not a word from them, just silence, no phone calls, no texts, they lay low. And you're oftentimes wondering what happened and you want closure. The narcissist wants to keep you in that position because they're able to maintain a position of power over you. They're still controlling you. They're still manipulating you. They're still working against you. It's all designed this way. They're not going to give you closure because they want to keep you holding on. And so it's almost like the narcissist knows how long to be gone for before they make that first hover. And this is more so for those of you that are very new to this. And for those of you that have been here before, those of you who have been, who are more experienced in this journey, think back to your first time. Think back to the very beginning, what that was like for you, how it felt when you didn't know, when you were still in pain and you were still searching for answers and you still wanted that closure when you needed to know. But all you got was silence. And then suddenly, they reappear. Out of nowhere, they simply resurface without an apology, no offer of any accountability, and they blame you for everything. They come back gaslighting you and telling you that if you behaved differently or if you treated them better or if you listened to them or if you kept the house clean or if you were better with money, if you spoiled her with more finances and more affection, they would have stayed. Things would have turned out differently. The abuse continues. And this is designed to make you internalize all of this, they're projecting and they are shifting the blame onto you. They want to make them themselves feel superior to you because the narcissist at all times has to convince themselves that they make no mistakes. They have to assume a position of power over their targets at all times times and therefore the issue has to be with the target and that's why they have to convince you that it didn't work out because of you and so they go off to the new supply but you know what happens is the new supply always you know then the new supply isn't always what they the narcissist believes that they would be 
Sometimes there's simply a dud and it does not work out. And so now the narcissist finds themselves in a position where they need to save face and they need to have, they need to recycle, they need to X recycle, they need to have somewhere else to go. But because the narcissist is, they don't have, they, they lack foresight. They come back to you if you will let them. And this allows them the opportunity to redeem themselves and to save face from everybody else and allows them to make you feel like they're doing you a favor and giving you a second chance by leaving this person and coming back to you. Understand that even in these situations, there will be no closure because they are not apologizing for anything that they did. In fact, they come back, like I said, gaslighting you and projecting, blame shifting, manipulating, still abusing you. They do not change. They will forever be who they are. They are the same and their qualities will forever be the same. They are committed to their toxic ways and they will use your pain and your emotions to their advantage. They will use your unhealed pain to gain access into your life. They'll use those, un those unhealed areas of your life to continue to derive narcissistic supply from you. They'll use your hurt, your unprocessed pain to allow them to save face, to redeem themselves from these failed relationships or these failed supplies that they have on the side. They will do anything to save face. And so it's important that you do not entertain the narcissist when they resurface, especially, especially in the beginning stages. I mean, at no point in time should you ever entertain them, but it is essentially important that you do not in the beginning while you are still healing because you will be re-injured. And what happens is that if you do accept a hover, and the narcissist comes back into your life, all they will do is love bomb you. The love bombing will be real fast and they will move swiftly into the devaluation, which will not last long either. And they will discard you and it will hurt more than it did the last time. And it will, it will be, it will be fast. It won't take long before that happens. And you find yourself right back in that same spot. It's important that you allow yourself the opportunity to heal and understand that this is a narcissist issue. It has nothing to do with you. They are who they are. They are toxic, vile individuals who spew venom on innocent people. You try to love them. You did not go into that relationship to be a trash can for the narcissist. No, you went there to love them. You went there to support them. You went there to be in partnership with them for life. But that's not what they give you. If you do reconcile with them, if you do allow them back into your life, what they want to do, what they work towards is crushing your soul so that you remain in a in a broken state and they want you to be in that state so that anytime they mess up with anybody else that they encounter they have you to come back to no that's not who you are you are not a forever supply you are not their go-to trash can when the world shuts them down. You are not who they can just show up to randomly because there is nobody else. You are more than that. And so do not, under any circumstances, entertain these jokers. You deserve more. And yes, I know it hurts. I've been there. 
And I've also been the one to entertain that fool several times. And that's why I know. So I want to encourage you today. As much as it may hurt you, delete the text thread. If you need evidence, if you need documentation, print it out. File that away. Give a copy to somebody, somebody you trust, so you can have backup. But delete the thread. Delete the pictures. Block them. Go limited contact. Deny them access to you. They do not deserve you. They never did. And begin to pour into your soul. Tap into yourself and feed your soul the very things that it's craving. Your own love, attention, and affection. I hope that this helps somebody in their process of or in their journey of healing. Until the next video, take care of yourself.